Today we're going to cover origin planes, what they are, and how to use them to speed up your workflow. To begin looking at origin planes, we need to open up a fresh part or assembly. What this is here that I have open is a fresh part file. Before you even draw your first line in a fresh file, you will already have your origin planes. But where are they? Well, the most obvious way to access these planes is by simply pressing start sketch. And the three planes shown when you start a sketch are actually your origin planes, which is typically overlooked because we usually speed right past this part of the process and begin doing our sketch. The origin plane is a constant plane within your model of which every feature and sketch originates from. Think of them as a invisible piece of paper in which you can begin sketching on. The center of these planes where they all intersect one another would be considered as your model's zero, zero, zero point, meaning our X, Y, and Z coordinates are at a value of zero. This is better known as the datum point or dead zero. Through just a quick look at, at the arrangement of these planes, you can quickly see that all of them relate to our three different axes, the X, Y, and Z axis. So these can be used to start sketches, as you likely know, but they can also be used within other aspects of the software, including the assembly environment. Before we move into an assembly, I'd like to touch on what's possible with the standalone parts with these planes. Now, the most common way I use these origin planes is as a center line for my part. In order for them to be used as center lines, a little bit of forward thinking needs to be employed to ensure that once your model is complete, your origin planes will in fact be central. Otherwise, they won't function too well as a center line, since the only use of a center line is to define the center point. And if they're not central, then they're not that useful to us. So the way I ensure that my origin planes remain central is to first do whatever sketch that it is that you're looking to do. And once we make our first extrusion to create a 3D body, we need to make sure that our extrusion behavior settings are set up in such a way that the direction parameter is controlled symmetrically, and that is using this button here. And ultimately, this is quite literally the press of a single button when extruding. And you'll see that when I confirm the extrusion, the relevant origin plane will in fact be central. Now, the other way that we can look at our origin planes is through the model tree, and you'll see a origin folder. And guess what? That houses our origin planes. So as you can see, I've extruded in this direction, in this axis, and we'll see that this plane right here will be completely central. And the way that I'm going to check this is by pressing M, our shortcut, and we'll see that we've got five mil here and the overall extrusion is 10 mil. So now we can see that we have a centralized origin plane, all because we've thought ahead a little bit and change the behavior of our extrusion. At the moment, this is the only plane that is centralized. The other origin planes aren't currently centralized because I didn't centralize the sketch around our datum. This can then be achieved through amending our sketch by opening up our original extrusion, double clicking into our sketch. We just need to amend it so that our geometry is symmetrical around our datum point. And this can be achieved through the use of two dimensions. So now we know that this is symmetrical, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now we know that our geometry is completely symmetrical around our center lines and our datum point. So when I press finish sketch, all of our origin points now are completely centralized. The reason I tend to do this is quite simply to prevent me from creating another plane in the model as my center plane. In my head, it makes a lot more sense to use our origin planes as the center lines since they're already in the model. Now, why would I need a center plane in my model? Well, for mirroring, of course, any features that I create on one side of the plane, and I'll just delete the other one so that we know which one I'm talking about, any features I create on one side of the plane can quickly be duplicated symmetrically around our origin plane. So that basically covers the use of the centralized origin planes in the part, but we can also make use of these in the assembly environment since we're capable of assigning constraints against these planes. So in the event that I'd like to centralize a part relative to another, I can simply toggle the origin plane found in the model tree, and then I can apply my constraints. So if I wanted the center of this part here to align with this edge, I can simply apply a constraint to the center line or our origin plane, and now we know that it will always be central. It is in the assembly stage that you'll really appreciate the fact that you thought ahead at the start of your modeling process, because if you didn't, then you'd be forced to open up your model and then create yourself a center plane using your plane tool. Now this might not take too long for one or two parts, but if you happen to be working with many, many different parts, then opening each part file individually and repeating the same process doesn't sound like an efficient use of time to me. 
So ultimately, I like to use my origin planes as pre-generated center planes in order to save myself the time and hassle of creating the plane myself. In conclusion, origin planes are versatile tools that can be utilized throughout the modeling process and with a little forward planning, a lot of time can be saved. If this video helped you understand origin planes, imagine how much faster you'll learn with my full inventor course. Click the link in the description to begin mastering your skills today and thank you for watching.